Okay, hey, it's Professor Streeter, and this video is going to be about Chapter 2 from Schaefer Landau's The Fundamentals of Ethics. The goal is really just to think about what I'm going to call the skeleton structure of an argument. He has, Schaefer Landau has many little mini arguments in Chapter 2, and they're interesting. They help you think about hedonism and whether to embrace hedonism or whether we have reasons to reject it. But also it's a good chapter just as to get into the practice and the habit of reading for argument and analyzing the argument and breaking the argument down and condensing it into its skeleton or bare bones form. Which is something that you can do as an exercise when you read, when you read a paragraph, like when you look at a big chunky paragraph. You can try to break it down into the skeleton argument or the, the bones of the argument. Um, it's something you can do in your essays. You can include a skeleton argument when you write. I mean, Schaefer Landau does. He surrounds the skeleton argument with paragraphs to explain what he's doing. But sometimes it's useful for the reader to see the bare bones of the argument and then see the paragraph that analyzes, is it, <coughs> analyzes it in more detail. Uh, in any case, whether you write this way or just use it as an exercise for figuring out whether you're understanding the argument that you're reading, it's a, it's a useful skill. Okay, so let's look at what Schaefer Landau does in Chapter 2. I've got this little PowerPoint slide show that I've made for you, and I will share with you. You can watch this video, but you can also look through the slides on your own time. We'll probably look at it a little bit together tomorrow in class. <clears throat> but here is uh, sort of my attempt to explain what's going on in brief. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to go on and on and on. I'm going to try to be brief. So here is the first slide. I'm going to load it so we have the full screen. <clears throat> okay, the title is Happiness All That Matters. That's in some ways a reference to the thesis of hedonism. The hedonist is saying that fundamentally, like from the only thing that really matters is happiness. Everything else derives its value from the basic or fundamental value of happiness. Okay, but so chapter two problematizes that or raises a question about that. Is that true? Is hedonism true? Okay, so we can look at the chapter as a whole as giving us some arguments against hedonism. Right? An argument against hedonism is an objection to hedonism or a reason to consider rejecting the basic thesis. Right? If we accept the argument, if we accept the objection, then we have reason to reject hedonism or re reject the basic thesis of hedonism. <clears throat> okay, so here's the basic thesis. Happiness, defined as attitudinal pleasure and avoidance of pain, is the highest end in life, the greatest good, right? the only intrinsic good. Or, another way of saying it, the only thing worth desiring for its own sake. Or, another way of saying the same thing, the only thing that directly makes us better off. Right? So, in, in essence, the thesis is, happiness is all that really matters. Okay? Um, here are some objections to that basic thesis, and I've put them in bullet points over here. There are seven of them in the chapter. What's called the paradox of hedonism, evil pleasures, the two worlds, false happiness, the importance of autonomy, life's trajectory, and finally, unhappiness as a symptom of harm. Let's start with the first one, <clears throat> okay? And so here's what I mean by a skeleton argument. An argument is a structured set of premises and conclusions, or and a conclusion, maybe there could be more than one conclusion, but there's at least one conclusion, and at least one premise. And the arrow there, the premises lead to or support the conclusion. The conclusion follows from the premises. That's the idea here of an argument. <clears throat> and so we've got this argument broken down into three parts. Two premises followed by a conclusion. So the paradox is this. I mean, just in brief, before we look at the skeleton argument, the idea is that, look, hedonism suggests that, you know, that if life is all about happiness, then we'll be happy by you know, we should be able to be happy by focusing exclusively on the end or the goal of our own happiness, if that's all that really matters. But the paradox seems to be, you know, like trying to chase a butterfly, right? The more we try to focus on getting the butterfly, the further it gets from us, right? Um, or, you know, it's, there, there's something about happiness, it seems elusive. 
if we make it the direct object of our attention, we seem to make ourselves miserable. Um, just like if we make, you know, winning the love of the person that we uh, have fallen in love with, if we make it our obsessive goal, if we think nothing but that, we usually don't, we're not successful in winning the love of the person that we've fallen in love with. We have to sort of focus on other things in order to make ourselves look desirable, and then the person falls in love with you. But if you just obsess about making the person fall in love with you, they won't fall in love with you. That's the kind of paradox that's work that's at work here. So to break the argument down into its skeleton form, we have the premise, if happiness is the only thing that directly makes us better off, then it is rational to single-mindedly pursue it. That seems like a plausible assumption, and it seems like something the hedonist is committed to. It's an if-then statement. If happiness is the only thing that makes us better off, then it's rational to single-mindedly pursue it, to, to make that my primary goal and to devote all my energy toward the pursuit of that. That seems like a rational choice of mine if, <clears throat> if I believe truly that happiness is the only thing that directs, directly makes us better off. That's the first premise, an if-then statement. If P, then Q. The second premise has the form of denying right, the second part or the consequent of the conditional statement in 1. The second premise is that it just isn't rational to do that. It's not rational to single-mindedly pursue one's own happiness. It leads to misery. <clears throat> we have to focus on other things, like uh, applying for the job, <laughs> if what we want is to get a job. Um, there are things we have to focus on in order to, in order to achieve the end in view. If we focus just on achieving the end, then we'll never achieve the end. Um, we have to think about the means to achieving the end, for example. Anyway, uh, the second premise is that it's not rational to single-mindedly pursue happiness. Well, if we deny that, right, <clears throat> I mean, if, if we accept the second premise, then we have to conclude that happiness isn't the only thing that directly makes us better off. This is a simple form of an argument. If P, then Q is the first premise. The second premise is, well, <clears throat> not Q. So we have to conclude not P, right? Therefore, happiness is not the only thing that directly makes us better off if it's not true that it's rational to single-mindedly pursue it. But notice the conclusion, three, is the denial of the basic thesis of hedonism. So if we accept the first two premises, it looks like we have to reject the basic thesis of hedonism, number three. We have to accept the conclusion. Okay, so this is a point about arguments. What makes an argument valid? An argument is valid if the conclusion, in this case three, follows from the premises, in this case one and two. And when does a conclusion follow from its premises? Just in case there's no possible world, or there's no possibility, in which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Okay. So this does look like a valid argument. If we accept the first two premises, it looks like we have to accept the conclusion. There's no world in which one is true and two is true, but three is false. Okay, but that doesn't mean it's, a, it's an argument we have to accept. It just means it's valid. It means if we accept the first two premises, we have to accept the conclusion, which is the denial of hedonism. Um, but notice that we don't have to accept three if one and two are not true, right? So that's the question. Do we have to accept the first two premises? Well, um, it seems like number two is one that is um, uh, hard to deny, right? <clears throat> that seems like a pretty plausible premise, and it looks like the first premise is pretty plausible, right? So what does, what do we want to say? Okay, that's sort of the question. 